Good afternoon, everyone. It's been a very long time I've been abroad in the US, and so that's why I'm going to do it in English, but for a very long time in my career, despite the success I had and all what happened in my life, I always felt that I was not happy. I got all the success that most entrepreneurs or CEO, I think, are looking for. You know, I, I worked with President Clinton, I started my own internet startup in New York City six, seven years ago, and we have over 200 employees, and I raised over $50 million for that company. I worked for a very large corporation, and despite that, despite the success, there was always something inside me that was telling me, that's not it. It, it can't be it. This is with my business partner five years ago, and it seems like I'm really happy there. In fact, I was miserable at the time. <laughs> I was just receiving the Entrepreneur of the Year Award in the US, which is quite a great award if you're an entrepreneur. But my company, in fact, despite its success, was not giving me personal success. I felt I was really unhappy in my life. I was a leader. In fact, it was in the press, everyone. This is an article from Forbes that announced Totsi.com, my company, as one of the most promising US companies. That was in 2012. And I didn't feel like my life purpose was to be successful, was to have those awards. But I worked all my life, for 20 years, in fact, to get there. So I could not really know what was going on. You know, I felt like I followed everything people told me. I did the big school, I ran big companies, I started my own business, I did all of it. So I followed my compass and somehow I was lost. And it was coming, you know, at a very profound suffering, like in the sense that one day in 2012, I just left everything. I was on my knees, literally on my knees. I was like, if I continue like that, I can build another business, I can run another big company, but there was a little voice in my heart that was telling me that I'm going to redo the same thing again and not find what I'm here for. That little voice, you know, we don't really train in business school or when you're a CEO, they tell you, don't listen. Follow your head, take decisions lead your team, build your business. It's all in your head. And so there's nobody is really telling you to do that. In fact, if you're a man, even more, or a leader, you know, this doesn't sound like, no, you should not do that. Well, so as I could not find any answer, I was depressed, I left everything. The whole thing. I left my business, my 200 employees, I replaced myself with another CEO. I left my life, I sell my apartments, my cars, everything I had. And I went for one year on the road with one backpack. That's what was inside the day I left. I took a photo of it. A lot of useless things in it, <laughs> but what I thought would be useful. And I went on a one-year travel, meeting the poorest of the poor and working with the poorest in the world. And my first stop was in Kolkata at Mother Teresa. And Mother Teresa, you working with people that are dying in the street, you take them home, you clean them, you put them in a nice bed, so when they pass away, they don't pass away like animals, but like humans. And that was a key moment in my life. I realized that I was all wrong. I was a great entrepreneur, maybe, but I forgot the human aspect of it. So I continue my travel. I work in the slums of India. Here is one of the biggest slums. It's in Kolkata also. I spend, you can see me, I don't know if you see me, I'm in the middle of the kids here. Uh, in the Philippines, I spend some time in Nepal, in Thailand, always doing work with people that are following their heart more. Here I'm with monks in the Himalayas in Nepal where I spend many months teaching English with a French accent. <laughs> and uh, at some point I was like, okay, you know what, this is good. You could come back, you have to come back. 
I've learned to trust a new compass. I discovered something that was so important that I've never heard about somehow in my business training that I felt, you know what? I need to bring that back to the people I used to work with. So I move away from New York City. This is where I live now. This is a picture of my garden. Two hours from New York. Downsize my life. Downsize everything. Very simple life. But with a new compass. So what's my new compass? I'll put you some elements here. People always ask me what changed. Well, I spent half of my time in nature. I spent half of my time teaching meditation. I've been doing meditation for over 10 years. I spent my time talking about being vulnerable and talking about the heart. And why I think it's important, because I believe that's true leadership. I thought I was a leader. I was not. If you're a leader because you manage 200 people, but if you come back at night, you feel angry or sad, and you cannot change that, what kind of leadership is that? If you don't have inner leadership on your emotions, if you get angry at your wife, your friend, your colleagues, you don't manage your emotion, but you can run a business with 20,000 people, is that true leadership? So I'm going to do a very quick exercise with you. I'm going to ask you to take your right hand, all of you, and put it on your heart, everyone, and close your eyes. Close your eyes for a minute. And I'm going to ask you to ask yourself the question, what is my heart telling me? Que me dit mon cœur? Quelle voix je peux entendre de mon cœur? What does my heart want? Okay, thank you. Well, I don't know if you do that very often. I never did that until a few years ago. And in fact, most of the CEO and the people I'm working with never did that in their life, and they're in their 50s sometime. I do that every morning because I realize that everything I learn in books at school, well, it's a great tool. The brain is very useful. But if you don't follow your heart, you're going to end up in the wrong road. You're going to be in limbo somewhere. So I completely changed my definition of success, happiness, life purpose, leadership. And why it's important, in fact, when I came back, I realized that I was not the only one to feel that way. This is articles from Harvard Business Review, Forbes, Business Insider, Inc., some of the most prestigious business magazines. They're all talking about the depressions, the anxiety, the sense of loss of CEO, of entrepreneurs. In fact, the year I left, 2012, I lost two friends, big entrepreneur in New York City that committed suicide after raising $20 million. So there was something big there, and nobody was really talking about it, but it was there if you look for it. So I came back, created a company called Sequoia Lab that's based in New York City, and what we do there is that we take CEO, entrepreneurs, leaders, politicians, celebrities on incredible journeys. A journey is inside, inside their heart. I'm not teaching anything to anyone. In fact, I'm just showing people that there is a voice there that needs to be heard if they want to be really happy. I go around the country and I give speech on happiness and purpose. This is at the French consulate in New York City, talking in front of 40 CEOs of French companies about why it's important to develop that in your company culture. Because if you don't do that, you're always going to have those two voices fighting. So why is that important? Well, employees today, I don't know in France, but more and more in the US, they don't want to work in an office anymore. They don't want the normal boss that they used to have. They don't want the nice speech and the nice makeup. They want truth. And sometimes they even don't even want to work in an office. They just want to be independent. Why is that? Because they don't recognize themselves in those societies, in those companies, those corporations. And it's something telling them more strongly to trust that voice. So the leaders of tomorrow, I believe, are the ones that are going to be able to be vulnerable. 
meaning to tell the people they're working with that they are humans. That they are not different, that they are not the guy on top. The leaders here might be, you know, the guy at the bottom, in fact, or the guy cheering on the side. So, why it's important? You know, for 10 years, when I worked with President Clinton and other companies, I was trying to change the system by making new laws, new regulations, greener products, a better positive economy like we heard about these past days. But I realized that if it's the same men that build the old economy are building the new economy, we are going to have the same problems. So the solution, you know, is never to stop that little voice because that one is never going to shut up, but to listen to it. So I'm going to invite you as we finish here and we leave the conference to think about how does your organization would look like if there was a space where the heart could be heard? How does your personal life, your social life would look like if you could be vulnerable and tell exactly how you feel to your friends and your colleagues? How does society would be transformed if we would be able to create that space. Thank you.